Welcome back to Baruto Anime Review. This is episode number 14. I put it 14. Uh, let me check that just to be sure. Because I think that was the most recent episode that I discussed that, correct? Yeah, it's 14. Yep. 14 is the most recent episode I just finished up. The path only Baruto can see. Simply put, this episode pretty much wraps up the first major arc of the series. Um, the whole thing with the whole ghost stuff. And pretty much uh, Sumeri basically being behind it all. Yeah, that's what was revealed in the last episode. And this one is just picking up like right where the last one left off. Where they're getting sucked into this, what looks like a... Goga told them, I think it's I think that's what they said it was. Yeah, and they um, battled the creature that they assumed soon, uh, basically ate up uh, Sumeri, but actually did not. And the battle goes on for a pretty good period of time, and Baruto basically is a genius, basically. He's like using the eye very well, and he found, he basically, it kind of, well, it, it kind of acts like the, um, the Byakugan in a way, except that whenever the Byakugan uses to see the chakra system, it comes out blue. When Barthos eye sees, it comes out red. I don't really get why, but yeah. Apparently its weak spot is between its tail and its rear end. Okay. Excuse me, and Sumri just doesn't want the, them to kill Na Nanu, I think that's how you pronounce the creature's name. Yeah. And after a while, basically, when, when the uh, when that big thing on her back basically is broken, yeah, just prior to that, basically, now we start to treat um, Summary like, like it's his parent, starts to be nice to her, despite the fact she's ordered to blow her up or, or kick her chakra. Yeah, because the fact that Barto can tell that uh, despite everything that's happened, like her being the way she has been throughout the series so far. He cannot believe that was actually an act. He refuses to believe that. Though, that's not kind of how not an act, except that she did, except she was not the daughter of a person from the Foundation. Yeah, and that's something quite interesting. Apparently, uh, with the exception of Psy, it seems like almost anybody associated with the Foundation were treated as criminals. Which I'm like, Psy was part of the Foundation, yet he was treated as a criminal. Which, the only theory I, the only theory I had, the reason why he wasn't, was because he's a friend of Naruto. That's the only reason why he wasn't, and plus he fought alongside the village during the fourth grade ninja war. Yeah. Though, I think it was in, I think it might have been the previous episode, or before that, where apparently that, um, the Hidden Leaf Village was, was basically, uh, in smoldering ruins during the fourth grade ninja war, which honestly made no sense, because... From what I saw from from what briefly I read from the manga, and of course watching the anime, the finding was nowhere near the Hidden Leaf Village, and yet the the village was a smoldering ruin. It's very bizarre. I know it was under reconstruction thanks to the pain incident, but I highly doubt it was because of the fourth grade ninja war. I, I think they made it up for the show. I have no idea because honestly, even the manga may not reveal exactly what the heck was going on in the village. Aside from the fact the only time the village was seen was when uh. Sasuke, Orochimaru, and uh, the rest of Sasuke's team, and the Sasuke's uh, Kobe, I think the name of his team was, where they went to the Hidden Leaf Village to, res to pretty much bring back the first four Hokage on the reanimation jutsu. And asked some questions, and of course they called him back to the war. But aside from that, that was the only time, basically, canon wise, it was seen, though, was what's the filler episode with Killer Hammer. Yeah. And. And of course, uh, Naruto himself is actually seen for like one scene the entire episode. Yeah, he's seen once, and he goes into sage mode. What looks like sage mode because his eyes basically are in like the sage mode thing. But for some reason, he doesn't get the uh, the orange um, eyeliner for some reason. Yeah, it's like okay, uh, he has the eye associated with sage mode, and yet he doesn't get the orange out uh, orange eyeliner. Yeah, that's very bizarre. It's like. I think the animators forgot the fact that, yeah, whenever he does that with his eyes, 
basically he's in sage mode, and apparently, I don't know if this is a version of sage mode I've never seen before, but basically you use sort of to search the area, which is quite bizarre. It's like, this particular thing is was not even explained, it's like, oh, it looks like he's in sage mode, because, well, his eyes basically look like they're having, um, one line through them, and he's standing in the area where that beast where it never went. Yeah, and it's like, okay, care to explain this? My personal theory is just that basically we're seeing Sage well from, from Naruto's perspective with when he's in it. But the thing is, the animators forgot to put orange outliner around Naruto's eyes. Either that or he must have developed a new version of the stage mode during the time he was Okage. Heck, even the last, even the film The Last, whenever he went to stage mode, he did have the orange outliner. He did have the orange eyeliner associated with it. But yet here, nope, no orange outliner. Kashi doesn't really do very much in the episode, he just talks to Naruto for like one scene, and then he disappears. Sai gets a scene, gets a scene a lot in this episode, and... In the end, basically, he goes, he gets a chance to talk to Sumeri after basically the whole spell thing on the thing is broken on her back, and Baruto can see basically there's a little remnant of memory basically going through her left hand, and yeah, I get the reason why Sai wanted to talk to her, uh, because of his experiences with the Foundation, which that's fine, I've got no problem with it, and then basically after they get all back from that whatever that dimension was. They realize that it's more like, oh crap, they're going to be late for school. <laughs> and the fact that their parents are going to be really ticked off with it because they, because they, they have passed curfew. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. Yeah, and, and, and um, Mes, Mes, Mesery, uh, Misuke is the only one basically who seems like he's not in trouble because, well, his parents are not in the Hidden Lake Village. It's just that you have Barto, Dikai, Shikai, Shikadai, and, um, Inojin basically going to be in trouble. And it's nice to see in one episode of the whole series where Inojin actually shares a scene with his father. Which is something that, aside from Shikamaru sharing a scene with his, with his son, and of course Naruto sharing scenes with, with Baruto. Yeah, that was actually nice, the fact that they did that. Though, they have not had a scene where they had um, Sakura says share a scene yet with, with Sadara. Or even Choji. Choji is not made appearance yet. He only appears in the opening title, which I'm like, that is very bizarre. Oh, and um, Shinna makes appearance in the episode, though it's via flashback, which is the second time that's happened. But basically, he made a physical appearance in the series. So, aside from Baruto himself, Shinna was practically the only our character who's appeared in every single episode so far. Yeah, he appears like every single one. The only time he he doesn't make, like, a physical appearance is the, uh, like, a couple times flashback, but at least they, at least I kind of count it as an appearance because, well, he physically showed up. Though in the next episode, he's going to make a physical appearance, but, yeah. At least he's not missing episodes, which is nice. Uh, Hanada, who appears in the first half of the series so far, uh, I think she missed this episode. Yeah, she's missed, like, the last couple episodes, but... I guess she's not that important, but I like the fact that, that Baruto brought up, like, pretty much most of Susumori's parents in episode 2, because that was her first appearance. Like, the way she was acting, like, her cutesy attitude and uh, her being worried all the time. Yeah. He, he basically, like I said about that, he refused to believe that was all an act, that that was naturally her. And... She says, "Yo, she she sets a tool for her father's revenge against the village for casting out members, just for casting him out." Yeah. Now, from what I can tell, even by the next episode, uh, she's not gonna be punished for this at all. Nope, she's not gonna be punished at all, because even Sai realizes, yeah, he's facing ghosts from the past, which is fine. So she would not be punished, and she go back to school, no problem. I don't think Barto have a, a resentment against her. I don't think you would meet would. Uh, the only people who might hold some resentment against her is probably Sadara and Chocho. And maybe Eno I don't think Enogen's Shikadai or even um uh Dikai. I don't think those three 
will have any resemblance. But I think Cho, I think Cho, Cho I think everybody else appears in the series. I think they might hold some resemblance against her because of what, what happened. They might, but but I think Barto is one person who not who basically stand up for her and just uh, basically not have any resent. He will never hold any resentment against her at all. I mean, yeah, he's kind of an idiot, but at least he's not much of an idiot like, like his father was when he was his age. Yeah, at least he notices stuff. Probably because he grows up with a parent unlike Naruto, who grew up with no parent at all. And one can tell by the next episode, and just check out, just channel it's not here next episode. Um, where apparently it looks like that they're going to doing some kind of fighting in the and almost a finished reconstruction of the Ninja Academy. Yeah, Ninja Academy is almost finished being rebuilt, so they can stop having classes outside, which is nice. Um, yeah, but the way it looks next episode is that it's a start of a new arc, and the ghost stuff is completely behind them, and who knows if Barzo's eye is going to be acting up again. Um, yeah, who knows? But, yeah, it just depends, though. The thing is, they haven't really properly explained his eye yet. Aside from the fact you can see, well, the Nenu thing, and the fact that you can see inside the Nenu system. Aside from that, there's been, like, nothing much else explained about it. I mean, as far as anyone's concerned, it's not the Byakuya. It's similar to it. Some might say it's a mutation of it, because, well, his mother has the Byakuya and he doesn't. Of course, anybody can tell he physically looks like his father, except that uh, the only difference is that he has um, two like two whisker marks on his face instead of like three like his father does. So his sister pretty much is the same way, though his sister looks like her mother, uh, with the exception of the little whisker marks. But yeah, this was a really good episode. I I got praise for this ghost arc. At least it's. At least they're probably going to stop the whole Freak of the Week thing for a while and just move on to something else. Maybe, they put, maybe they're going to just start up something else. Uh, I'm having a funny feeling that they're probably going to wrap up the whole thing with Ninja County thing very soon. Because this has been going on since episode since the start of the series with, you know, the, everybody being Ninja County. But my guess is in probably in the next couple months. It could be by, by episode 20 that the final make it past Ninja Academy stuff and just move on to I don't know after after the events of Bar the movie. But who knows what the animators want to do? Um, let's see, is there anything else? Uh, nothing I can think of no. Uh, the next episode is called A New Path. Okay, from the sound of the title, it seems like, yeah, it's definitely the start of a new arc. Which, for some reasons, Sumeri is kind of like, her face is like, it's like she's ashamed. And, and it looks like definitely she's back to wearing her, uh, her normal attire that she's been wearing since the start of the series. Which is fine. And her hair is back the way it's, it, it, it was before. Um... But at least that she did something that Hanada basically, that Barzo's mother Hanada basically waited a long time to do. Hold hands with, um, well, when Hanada hold hands, her first time she held hands with Naruto was during the fourth grade ninja war. Sumeri did it for the first time in this episode, where she held hands with Barzo when he rescued her. But yeah. I had to bring that up, because, well... If not, some people might actually forget to bring him up, or he might remind me about that. Okay? But, uh, yes, it is definitely a good episode. Um, so, that's it for this episode of the Baruto Anime Review. Uh, stay tuned for next week, where I'll talk about episode 15, and hopefully I'm going to go back to a video format. I hope so. Okay? But until then. I will hear you there. Bye.